Cheers! Cheers! Here's to the latest episode of Tipsy Talk. What are we drinking, Erin? Um, that is a cucumber gimlet and... I'm having a straight Woodford Reserve on the rocks. I definitely recommend the cucumber gimlet. We will send Erin to your house after this. This is Sil Tang, my friend Sil Tang, and we were just trying to figure out how we originally met. It was definitely about jewelry yes. because you covered luxury goods, right? I would say, for the, especially for the Financial Times. That's I, I was in your story on mechanical jewelry because that's a specialty of mine. But we can't really figure out why we met in that coffee shop that day. We were introduced by someone and it was centrally located to the two places that we were both in, so sort of halfway in the middle. However we met, I'm glad we did. And Syl is a futurist, and I think you should do the honors of describing what that means. So when I'm in a cocktail party, I just tell people to glorify the economist because everybody understands what that is. But the longer version is a futurist is someone who helps both companies and editorial uh, situations figure out what external factors are going to be affecting, for example, a company. So things that are coming down the line, whether it's uh, economically, politically, um, a big horn, honking a big horn, um, <laughs> any sort of external factor, uh, technology that's changing, external to an organization um, that is going to affect them. So it's things that they are not tracking, and it typically goes further out. It's not trends because it's going out several years. So it might be five, ten years, and things that are going to come and affect them in terms of what they're doing, but are not part and parcel of their business. So the reason futurists look so far out into the future is also because it takes a while for you to make those changes. So I sort of like to say it's never too late. <laughs> There's still time to make those shifts little by little. It just is, you know, say you have to recognize there's a problem first so if you're feeling that there's not a problem and I hear that a lot you're not going to say hey let me get someone to tell me what the problem is and what to do about it I like the idea that it's kind of never too late it's I guess late. until you go out of business <laughs> that's too late then, then you can start a new business, then you start a new business. Um, let's talk about your book let's give 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 us give the people the premise <laughs> well, it is. Um, it is a pop economics book. It is meant to be a, a really easy to read understanding of using the lens of clothing, of understanding where the world is going. So a lot of the issues that people are talking about today, um, climate change, the elections, uh, the sort of clash of civilizations that are really happening between the East and the West, um, famine in Africa, and then a lot of other lighter topics, avocado toast. Uh, farm to table living, uh, charm jewelry, being superstitious, and then I link those things together in these unusual stories about where the world was going. So my hope is that at a minimum they'll be entertained and uh, better yet, I hope they'll figure out a tool that helps them understand the world differently and possibly make some changes to living better. Well, I think that you know people have this idea that fashion is it, it's sort of that devil wears Prada idea. There's this whole community of people who, you know, stalk the sidewalks of New York twice a year, and if you don't care about fashion, then you don't care about clothing. So it's not, you know, people don't think about, for example, the Lance Armstrong bracelets as being fashion, but they come up as an example because it was an indication that people started to really care about fitness. And that was happening en masse, and it was an indication that eventually led to you know, the city bike program that we have in the city um, exists in lots of other places. It's Forest Bikes in London, I don't know what it's called now, but it used to be called Forest Bikes. And that actually came out of a collective movement that was seen first in something that was wearable. So there are a lot of aspects of clothing that are not fashion, but that are about that. So, um, what about the current political climate? <laughs> Is it making predicting the future much more difficult and with that I'm gonna have a drink I, <laughs> because I'm I, stressed because I need it yeah I'm so stressed out already um, I think it isn't I think the existing political climate is actually something that is 
perhaps it's not as surprising to me. It is really reflective of how people feel, how they felt for a long time. There were actually a lot of indications that this was coming. And, you know, I, I, I will tell you that I gave a speech in March of 2016. And I remember when I gave this talk, people were very upset with me because I stood on the podium and in the middle of speaking, I said, I said that Trump was going to win. And it was an audience of left-leaning folks and they were horrified, there was a collective gasp. You know, people came up to me afterwards, they argued with me, some just sort of talked over me as I sort of stood there like, you know, why did I say this? <laughs> So when you look at the collective feeling, all of those those signs were there of where we are going now. That's you know that's true also in geopolitics in terms of this clash of civilizations that's happening between um, the the Middle East and the, the West. That that has actually been happening for some 20, 30 years. Um, it is. People seem to think it happened overnight, but it's actually been going on for a while. It's just sort of bubbling up and getting louder and louder and louder. When it comes to your Trump prediction that you blurted out at your speech, it was, kind of you know, it was, it was planned. It was planned. I just okay. didn't. It was planned. I just didn't know that people were throw tomatoes. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Don't don't shoot the messenger. You know that kind of thing. Can you give? What, like you know, one clothing related sure. example? Uh, absolutely. Uh, piercings. Uh, so it's not clothing, but it's jewelry. Piercings. If you if you go back and here's the you know I think it was Gore Vidal who said we're not we're not the United States of America we're the United States of Amnesia. And if we do you know do the exercise of remembering where we came from or what has occurred over the years then it's much easier to think about what is coming next. And an example of that is if you look at how people used to dress, if you go back to say, you know, the 1980s or the 1990s, the only people who had crazy piercings were artists, people who were rebelling against their parents, but it was something that was really out there. It was outre, it wasn't mainstream. Now everybody has piercings. Everyone has piercings. Ten. There you go. Nose piercing over there. Imagine if you, now you can actually get a mainstream Wall Street job with a nose piercing. That was not something that was doable in the 1980s. Now you can have a neck tattoo and get a Wall Street job. That also was something that didn't occur. So, you know, when you look at the way people express themselves and their individualism and their attire, you know, now everybody has a tattoo. Everybody has a piercing. Everyone has blue hair, pink hair, whatever crazy look they're wearing. Everyone has a deviant art project on the weekend. It's just not abnormal. So what did that what does that mean when everyone's everyone's a rebel in the same way? It means that things that are the establishment are no longer considered valuable. It means that things that are, you know, norm core is a bad word now. People are really upset if you call someone the worst thing you can call someone today is basic. Right. Starting your next book yet, or you're just like, yeah. let me take a rest. I'm, after. Just, trying to, I'm <laughs> just trying to get this book done, trying to get the website done. Um, we have a number of promotional things coming up. I have an idea for the next book, but it's a little bit of a challenging concept. So it, it requires a number of countries, a lot of research, and might be something that needs a grant. I just want to say thank you for coming you. and Cheers. toast to you and um, are you going to do any readings or signings of the book? I am. I'm doing an event with the Accessories Council the first week of December, which is a practice. And then I also have a library reading, I think it's the, the second Sunday of November. I'm putting that, as the information comes together, I'm going to put that information out on my Instagram and on my Twitter. Both of those are at HipGuide. Um, I also started one for the book, but I have yet to populate it. Um, it is at Disrobe Book. It's a, great, it's a great title, by the way. Thanks. Very sexy. I just wanted it to be one word. You can't get sexier than Disrobed. Than disrobed. You know, I'm a little concerned about what imagery might come up when you search the word. Oh. Disrobed book. That's, that's yes. Disrobed book. Disrobed book. Anyway, disrobed book. cheers to disrobed. Cheers.